The Prococo corruption trial it continues in federal court today as more witnesses take the stand, including Governor Cuomo's chief of staff. Our own Dominic Carter, he's been at the courthouse since the beginning. He joins us live. And Dominic, you spoke with one of the principals today, isn't that right? That is indeed the case, Richard. A story that we first told you last night on this program. And today, we went one-on-one -on -one with the governor's chief of staff. Prosecutors are hammering away, trying to show how Governor Cuomo's right-hand man, Joe Prococo, used his influence on state officials as part of his alleged bribery scheme. In his testimony, State Budget Office official Michael Novakowski received a 2015 email from his boss regarding payment to a Syracuse developer, a group known as Core Development, saying, quote, because Pococo is involved, we'll have to get a status update and move things along quickly. Novakowski testified that, quote, we certainly paid attention to them and moved them to the top of the list, referring to late payments to CORE. But it's also this type of disclosure that no governor would ever want to hear, especially one with a possible eye on the White House. Are you worried this trial will hurt the governor's uh, uh, political future? Not at all. Not at all? That's it. Thank you. Cuomo's chief of staff, Linda Lacewell, testifying for a second day in a row about how Prococo disclosed to Governor Cuomo the bribery allegations and a three-way conference call while FBI agents were raiding his Westchester home. The FBI is raiding Prococo's home and he's on the phone with the governor briefing him. Listen, I'm a former federal prosecutor. I've conducted trials. I'm going to respect the process here. There's a jury with the trial underway. Let's let that go forward. I think my testimony speaks for itself. Mr. Pococo, are you nervous that you may ultimately be found guilty? As I said to yesterday, Dominic, it's good to see you, but Barry, I can't I'll do it do better than Barry does. We are confident. We think we've had a good week. Meanwhile, a question remains regarding who can be in the courtroom. Pococo's lead attorney, Barry Bohr, asking federal judge Valerie Caproni to bar Richard Morvio, the lawyer for the prosecution's star witness, lobbyist Todd Howell, who has yet to testify. How do you feel about the fact that he doesn't want you in the courtroom? Huh? That's his prerogative. And you think you should be there? Uh, I'm a member of the public and I'm always interested. You want the lawyer for Howell not in the courtroom? That's correct. Why? Uh, the rule is that Howe himself would not be allowed to be in the courtroom, and we think his lawyer is just there as a stand-in for Mr. Howe. Okay. Right. Listening to the testimony and giving Howe an opportunity to prepare uh, to uh, spin some more tales. So, Richard, court ended less than an hour ago. There is no testimony, no court tomorrow. We will be back here on Monday, and as you have been reporting for weeks, Richard, and you turned out to be right, this is a case that is being closely monitored by the media, and I mean every step, every word, every witness, that's what's going on. Reporting live from Lower Manhattan, I'm Dominic Carter. Richard, let's go back to you in the studio. And just, Don, from a timeline standpoint, it's amazing in four days what they have gotten done this week. I mean, you covered Menendez, Silver, Skelos, uh, the whole litany of them. And this one's moving at Mach 5 here, right? Richard, it, I'm glad you asked that question because it gives me an opportunity to provide perspective here. Imagine how shocked I was and other reporters were sitting in a federal courtroom and the governor's chief of staff testifies under oath how the governor, in her words, found out about this as the FBI is raiding Mr. Pococo's home. Now, uh, some of his frustrations, Pococo's frustrations, are showing. Uh, he, didn't, he had some words that were not too pleasant to say tonight about one of the newspapers, but 
you know, these things happen uh, as he was walking away. This is only week one, Richard. This trial is expected to go uh, up to six weeks. And remember, in connecting with your point, Richard, we have not heard from the star prosecution witness yet. We have not heard from Todd Howe, who was a lobbyist, a longtime uh, 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 Cuomo aide who apparently set up this arrangement, this alleged arrangement with Bococo. So it's going to be very interesting. And the governor's political future at the end of the day could be on the line. Richard. All right, Dominic, thank you very much. Uh, let's bring in our panel, Richard Brodsky, former Democratic New York State Assemblyman from Westchester, also professor at NYU. Also, we're joined by conservative strategist Bill O'Reilly and to his side, Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. Um, Interesting, you, you, we learned it from the opening statements, um, prosecution definitely is making the governor a part of this. The relationship between the two, the influence uh, that Prococo was perceived or did have when he went into the lobbying world and obviously the access to the governor. Surprising at all how much they're combining the I, two? I, I'm not sure I think they've pushed the governor in. In, in ways that are politically disadvantageous because they've made it clear the governor is not going to be subject, not a witness, not uh, a, a party to these transactions. So um, th th I'm not sure that they're really that focused on him. What, um, what's fascinating to me is this notion that Todd Howe is the key to the case. I have a sneaking suspicion, no evidence for it, <clears throat> that the government is going to present a case that is largely factual and that they've left the impression that it's all about how, when it's all going to be about the checks cashed, the jobs performed, the uh, other stuff. So I, I you know, I, I think this is going to be f a more fact-based prosecution than what we saw with Silver and Menendez and uh, um, uh, and Scalos. Doesn't, Scalos too. doesn't the prosecution have to bring Cuomo into this? Because he's the source of Prococo's power, so the only way that Prococo could have corrupted that power or had any power to corrupt, arguably, You're is through right. his relationship with the... But what was the, the thing the we were talking about last night with the attorneys was the revelation that came out of trial that as Prococo's house is getting raided, who's he on the phone with? He's on the phone with the governor, uh, not once but twice, um, and getting reconnected there to it. Bill, people are going to hear the name Todd Howe in quite a bit. Um, and as we understand it, he worked out a deal with the prosecution and he was cooperating with him. How big of a player has he been? What What is a figure? What are we going to learn about him for the people that are outside of Albany, um, uh, unlike yourself, that know what's going on? I think the defense team is going to chew Todd Howe to a pulp. I think they told us. I think they're going to rip up. He's been around Dominic Albany a long yesterday. time, yeah. and he worked for he worked for the old man for Ma for Mario and for Governor Cuomo, and and um, and I think there's you know there's a sense that nobody loves a rat too much. I mean, he was he was in on the on setting this up if this actually occurred, and. Um, and I think he's gonna he's gonna pay a price a little bit for it, but they'll they'll tear him up. I mean, I think they'll they'll find a lot of holes. The government you know. knows that they've already the chief prosecutor already said he is a criminal. So the, the the if they use him as the only evidence of of criminality on Joe's part, then I think there's a reasonable chance that he's acquitted. If he's there merely to support or explain factual evidence, that's what I was trying to yeah. say, that I didn't say so well. Then I think uh, it's 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 a it's a it's a faint a head faint uh, to, to move him into the center now when in mm -hmm. fact he will not be the center of the prosecution. Well, we talk about the governor, um, and oftentimes it's about uh, his uh, fractured relationship with the mayor of New York City. Well, Governor Cuomo and Bill De Blasio are famously not BFFs. Uh, De Blasio has not uh, been charged with anything, but all cases are closed. His office was the focus, though, of corruption investigations. And now we are learning one of his major campaign donors secretly pleaded guilty, admitting that he uses contributions to win favorable lease terms for a restaurant on city property. The donor, uh, Mr. Singh here, got what he wanted, but de Blasio never got charged with the thing. The Times is reporting that federal prosecutors never charged de Blasio because the burden of proof is so high when it comes to corruption cases. And, and Andrew, it, 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 there's a couple notable things out of this. Uh, it, it sounds awful um, that there he wrote a check. He wrote a check, and everybody seemed to know what the check was um, going to help him from an access standpoint. But the damning words afterwards: we didn't charge him because basically nobody nobody can prove corruption anymore. Was the takeaway? 
Yeah, this was the campaign for One New York. This was the, the advocacy group that de Blasio had set up to try to uh, spend money and influence policy decisions on his own. And that sort of gets into the gray area there. I don't think this is going to be, this is embarrassing for de Blasio, certainly, but I don't think it's going to lead to anything more. He's at you know, the start of his second term. Um, and he, unless he pulls a Bloomberg, he's not going to be able to run for a third one. So, uh, you know, but forgetting the politics for a minute, the statement as to why they never went after the mayor, forget about the efficacy or not, was a broad statement in general about corruption being so hard to prove. Yes, but it's also consistent with what we've been saying on this program for some time. And the only one who disagrees with that is to my left. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> being to your left is not a hard place to be. <laughs> the, 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 the fact of the matter is that the Supreme Court, Scalia and Breyer and Ginsburg, all on the same page, and Thomas, said that you have to be able to show that something bad was done. If no, that I, I, I definitely don't agree with, well, with your interpretation, here? something bad. I think something, everyone agrees, something bad happened with Menendez, something bad happened with okay. the Silver case, something bad happened with Skelos you're, here. You're, but I your point is that you have to literally see the middle of the envelope I, change hands. No, I accept the correction. Not something bad, something criminal. There, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with legal co campaign contributions which people do stuff, and, and everybody understands that, that's not subject to criminal law. Let me ask you a direct question, Anything. Counselor, okay? The guy, it, it seems so patently obvious. He's giving money because he wanted something. And what he wanted as it relates with his uh, mm -hmm. restaurant on City Island, he got. On the advice of counsel, oh. I, <laughs> I plead the Fifth Amendment. God. It looks awful. But, but realistically, how is that any different from the Koch brothers donating money to conservative causes for policies that they want or for the Soroses of the world to do the same thing. I mean, this happens all I'll, the time where I, you have I'll give you the distinction. You might not think it's got a difference to it. But one is, that's basically a, a pack setting up money that they're trying to influence legislation. This is a direct check that's going contract. directly for a contract. Well, to that, me, that, 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 that's a useful decision. Can but you legis explain what a contract is? Le legisla <laughs> legislatures don't let contracts. And if that's your theory, then you're sort of letting legislators off the hook all the time. The fact of it is that in the prosecution of Joe Pococo, the prosecutor stood up and said, this is old-fashioned, the regular kind corruption. And they're not going to get caught this time with the legal uncertainties that they've gotten caught with repeatedly in Menendez, in Silver, and in Skelos. You will agree with me, Bill, though. When whatever laws are designed to police campaign contributions, I think the intent and the spirit was this kind of an arrangement isn't supposed to happen. <laughs> right, it's not supposed to right. happen. Yeah, but also in today's world from a media perspective, you can survive anything almost other than an indictment, uh, uh, you know, whether you're, you're pulled in yourself. Right. And in both these cases, in the de Blasio case, he was, he was not indicted. Other sexual harassment, or, that's or, a new one, yeah. Or, sexual, right. or, or Gov Governor Cuomo, who was looked at, Andrew Cuomo, who was looked at, obviously, by, by the feds for a while. But there's no, there's no charges, they'll survive it. They'll move through it. It's not a nice news cycle, but they'll get through it. I, okay, and on that inspiring note, when we come back, uh, Governor Cuomo, he's raising millions for his re-election campaign, but Republicans, they are raising thousands, if that. Question is, why aren't any viable Republicans running, especially with what we just talked about with the Prococo case? We'll get into that after this.